a talk by Dr. Jose Ramon Albiol, and he is going to be speaking a bit about Hyperloop infrastructure and a new concept of a Hyperloop tube. He's been developing it um, with Celerus, and I hope you enjoy the talk. We will have questions at the end. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I am delighted to give the thanks uh, to the European Hyperloop Week organizers, especially to the uh, Hyperloop UBB team for the invitation. Thank you so much. Let me introduce myself. I am a professor Albiol from UBB to the Faculty of Building Engineering. I am a collaborator of Hyperloop UBB and Celeros advisor in the field of infrastructures. My professional experience <coughs> is in research lines of special concrete and composite materials in building sector. Today, as a researcher coordinator of UBB and Celeros team, I would like to share with you a new method to develop for construction of the Hyperloop infrastructure. <coughs> Previously, some important notes which will make you understand the reason for this new proposal. It's, it's clear, at least I think so, that Hyperloop will be the future of, transporta of transportation, as you can see in the slide, connections around the world are essential. If you look at the connection between Europe and Africa through Spain, it will be very important for us. In addition, the connection with the American continent is interesting through the Iberian Peninsula, and we have a great task to, to keep solution to this challenge by land and sea. Well, in the following table, it presents the relations between the components, the technological development. For example, we have infrastructure, high speed tube switching, propulsion and power delivery, vacuum and power, axial compressor, vehicle side linear motor, more infrastructure side linear motor, levitation, propulsion levitation, etc. And I think there are very advanced lines of research in the name components. All of you are great specialist in all of this. My congratulations, everyone. But I have the follow feeling. I think the infrastructures are taken for granted that it's practical solved, and it is not true. We have infrastructure for vehicles, trains, trams. We use roads, bridges, tunnels, and uh, what about what happened with the maritime infrastructures? What happened in these cases? In the upper right picture, you can see the passage through San Francisco Bay parallel to the Golden Gate, and in the lower image, you can see another situation, another locations. All of this is courtesy of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, Virgin, and Next Loop. Okay, this, uh, these designs are amazing, but we need uh, to make it. Well, maritime infrastructures are very important. Let me give you an example. A large ship can transport between 11 and 18,000 containers from Valencia to Shanghai. 
VDEC with a transit time around 34 days and a frequency of seven days with uh, a hyperloop concept we can arrive 3,000 units of containers per day. In 34 days, we can reach 95,000 units. It's a great, it's amazing. But for me, the most important thing is in seven days with a Hyperloop concept, we have uh, transported 80,000 containers without collapsing the port, and for me, the time is money. Obviously, we have to make the Hyperloop infrastructure cheaper, include ports, tubes, systems, navigations, power, energy, and more. The large ship's option has not maritime infrastructure costs since the sea is there. It's, this is obvious. We have many challenges. As you can see, our equipment, in my experience, uh, making projects about research tracks for hyperloop transportation are very strict. The engineers tell me, hey, Jose, we need uh, moderate slopes, no lateral movements, and you can see we have earthquakes, we have wind, we have uh, tides, thermals, mechanics, impacts, deflections, and uh, this is uh, so complicated to satisfy everyone. We must to be flexible with the tolerance of infrastructures and also adapt to them. In the case of marine infrastructures, the movement will be important and it will not always be possible to satisfy the Hyperloop requirements. This is important, repeat. It will not always to be possible to satisfy the Hyperloop requirements. Well, it's like a suspension of a rally car absorbing the bumps. We can apply this concept to Hyperloop. Here, I leave you this topic to think it, because for me, it's, it's important. Well, as you can see in this slide, we have seen the relevance of infrastructures depending on the environment in which they are located. Now, I want to share with you a new way to build the Hyperloop tube. For this, you have to take a look at how it's built in a traditional way, and it is feasible to offer another way to do it. Let's first, an example in this section, thinking about the basic requirements for, for example, a, a research track. A pot weight one ton, for example, let's talk about HG of acceleration and braking. Let's take this example. We are talking about, for example, uh, S355 steel tubes. 35 millimeters thick with an internal diameter 1.5 meters. The arrangement is made in pipe segments about 12 meters. This support in two points of a span, no more than six meters longer, this span between the supports. And we can use three meters more longer in cantilever to have the union between uh, the next segment. Well, um, due to the thermal expansion, 10 millimeters of neoprene is used with the screw, screw Corolla. 
In the picture on the left, we can see a typical section. It is important to reduce the cost to be able to use prefabricated elements, foundation, pillars, columns, made to measure according the different levels that we can observe in the soil, in the ground, and at the section of the tubes. The easy of assembly on site is our goal. The joints must be bolted, not welding. Why? Because welding, we spend a lot of time. We need to make a test. And remember, the time is money, always. We need to prepare the ground. You can see here, for example, we need to prepare it. Uh, <clears throat> we need to prepare the ground with a parallel track to make the arrival of the precast elements. The slope of the soil are important to have a perfect horizontally. For this, our prefabricate mounting system must be able to adjust height, as you can see in this image. Let me check here in the connection between the foundation and the column. We use special screws to uh, up and down, no more, two, three, five millimeters to adjust the correct situation because when you are working on site, it's very difficult to, uh, to have one millimeter a right to one millimeter up and down. It's super difficult, these uh, values. I am fighting <laughs> with uh, uh, my colleagues engineers and said, uh, Jose, it's not possible. Our tolerance is below one millimeter. And I said to him, it's impossible to arrive at this tolerance. It's impossible. By the moment, it's impossible. We are not fabricating uh, a car in industry. We are working <laughs> on site. <laughs> okay, this is a, this is it's, it's complex. It's complex. Well, um, this summary is about works on site, but uh, what is happening in the factory, manufacturing the pipes. Well. Let's see the traditional way of making metal tubes. We have the steel process to obtain the metal. Look. We need high energy. We need to spend high cost. And we need large machinery to carry out welding, test inspections, and more. Large storage areas, look at this. We need to spend a lot of money with these areas. Large storage areas, welding, repairs, auxiliary forms, look at this. To avoid the formations in these uh, tubes, Use a large cranes, look at this, to handle the tubes, cost, cost, and more costs, and load onto the truck. Well, my propose, our propose, UPB and Celeros, <laughs> we have a new system that we will propose to eliminate all of these tasks. It's impressive. It's possible. Yes, it's possible. Another thing, large tubes must be transported one by one at the same time. We have a great difficulty of access. We need a great deployment of auxiliary vehicles to transport them, a special tent tables, lessons, and more and more. Difficult, it's really. 
Once on site, large cranes for lifting and positioning the tubes. And uh, if I tell you that we can send five or six or seven uh, tubes in a single truck, it will be possible? Yes. Of a normal dimension, a simple single truck, without need for a special license, without auxiliary support vehicles, and reaching areas of difficult access every time, and fast access without interfering the traffic. This is super important, too. Well, do you remember a few slides, sorry, <laughs> a few slides ago, how to save costs? We used prefabricate elements. With a 3D, 3D printing technique, we can make it them, not only in the factory, this is the case, not only in the factory. Uh, we can also make on site, made to the mixer and in real time, saving costs. Perfect to use in foundations and columns, pillar, look at this, this is a, a column with the design that you want to make it, it's really uh, very easy for us. Well, and finally, because my presentation is short, the disruptive method from uh, UPV and Celeros, we have a patent, this is recently, one month ago, was uh, uh, make it, we are fighting during uh, two years to obtain this, this patent from the idea, develop the idea in the laboratory, in, the, in our labs. And after all of process to achieve the patent, we can uh, present you the section. And this section, uh, obviously, uh, I cannot tell you all of our technology. We need to reserve <laughs> a great part of our know-how. And despite being patent, but I can tell you that regarding this section of the tube that consists in three rings, look here, one, two, and three. Three rings, basically, it's very simple. And uh, the external, internal, and intermediate ring. The external inter internal uh, rings give the structure mechanical strength with a low weight. For this, we have a combination of carbon, fiber, fiberglass, composite materials are used. Different layers, different uh, directions, thickness, etc. And we can even use a metal fibro laminate too. Uh, metal fibro laminate too is a technology that used in, in, uh, in the fuselage of uh, the planes, for example, Airbus. I think Boeing también uh, use it. It's, uh, it's very simple. It's uh, layer by layer. Uh, carbon fiber, glass fiber, and aluminum. And all of this composite is uh, fibro laminate. It has a, a great performance in different temperatures, flying, obviously. And uh, we can add on our metals, like um, uh, steel. The union between these rings is made with different materials, we can use the structural forms. In this case, here in yellow color, we can use these uh, structural forms, high performance concrete with a small layer thickness. This intermediate layer, <coughs> sorry, has several functions. Connection link between the external and internal rings, 
structural stiffness, like a concrete core in a skyscraper, acoustic and thermical insulator, give the shape section during swell, and like a mold, later we need infusion, a resin, for finish the product. Well, we need sometimes these connectors, these connections, if we want to increment, increase the strength between external and internal layer. Well, for me, the simil is clear. Will we make a tailored suit and then puffing it up? Well, and finally, I want to share with you the following video to explain its application on site. Let me check. One second. Come on, wake up. No problem. Feleros and the Polytechnical University of Valencia present the Tube Loop, a novel tube manufacturing and assembly method that'll boost Hyperloop infrastructure scalability, accelerating route deployment processes while reducing construction costs. Tubes are made of a composite material that consists of three layers. The inner and outer layers are made of a material such as fiber reinforced plastic or a fiber metal laminate, giving the tube the structural resistance. The core layer in between is made of a polymeric or a cement based foam that provides thermal and acoustic isolation properties to the tube. The manufacturing of the Z tubes is simple and fully automatic. At the factory, the inner and outer layers are created, getting two flat skins. Then, a chemical reaction binds these skins together with the inner core, obtaining a rigid structure that can be folded. Finally, the valves, the gloves, and the partially sealed vacuum bags are introduced, and the tube is wrapped so it is ready for transportation. As the tubes are wrapped, one truck can transport dozens of tubes altogether, minimizing transportation costs and carbon footprint radically. Once the trucks reach the construction site, the prefabricated composite material is unloaded and unwrapped. Then, the different globes can be inflated until they reach the desired size. The foam core is injected in between the fiber skins and starts curing. After that, the globe is removed and starts the infusion phase, where the epoxy resin is injected with the vacuum bag. And finally, the coatings are applied to give it the desired finish. The track mounting phase is simple, thanks to the Z-Tube technology, as the tubes are lightweight and can be installed in parallel accelerating the construction process while minimizing transportation costs. Also, joints are simplified as the thermal expansion is minimized. The main benefits of the Z-Tube technology are resistance to corrosion, weight reduction, radically lower thermal expansion, dimensional stability, reduction of the carbon footprint of the transportation of tubes, lower risks due to lower tube weights, Good thermal and acoustic isolation. Tube Loop, a more scalable tube technology to accelerate Hyperloop development and the deployment of routes worldwide. That's all. Thank you for your attention.
<laughs> if you have any questions, do not hesitate to, to tell me about if I know <laughs> how to give the solution. Hi, okay, yeah, uh, I think this is working. Basically, if you have any questions, raise your hand, say your name and your team name, and yeah, this stuff. I've not said to take a coffee. <laughs> okay. Well, my name is Maria, uh, I'm from Hyper UPV, and I would like to ask you if you think that this uh, is, it can be the first step in the standardization of the infrastructure for having hyperloops uh, moving around the world, this kind of like patterns that we are developing. Yeah, okay, thank you, Maria, for your questions. Well, the first is to have uh, investment, <laughs> is the first. If we, if we don't have investment, we don't uh, can uh, continue to develop this, uh, this system. Uh, this system has been uh, tested in our labs and uh, it's not the same in labs that to scale to the reality we must to work a lot to develop uh, and to pass from the lab to a uh, large scale and uh, in this moment when we have uh, investment our budget increase a lot we can make it um, a tube a uh, large scale and uh, we try to uh, put the system in a research track. It's uh, essential because if we have uh, the typical way, is the most usual way to, to do these uh, uh, tracks, you can see the first track that we can uh, obtain in Hyperloop UPV in, in our faculty. The tube is <laughs> the still, if we can make a track, for example, two kilometers, we can make one segment of 12 meters and insert in one part, in the start, middle, to the final, introduce this segment with this new uh, tube and test, test and more test, like a COVID, test, test, test. And money, <laughs> really, this is important. We don't have money, we don't can continue to develop the, this situation. Hi, really interesting talk. I'm fascinated to see the more infrastructure side of this development. Uh, I was curious, is this tube concept viable for underground Hyperloop systems? Wow, <laughs> great, great question. Okay, I, I think we'll be the same. A few minutes ago to, uh, to start uh, this, my presentation, I was talking with a colleague about uh, the same question. And uh, I think, I think uh, that the way to, uh, to drill the mountains, the rocks, will be the same, will be the same, that uh, we can save not to use doubles in the tunnels, and all of machines, big machines that we need to use to put in several sections, dowel and other dowel, etc. And I think the first time you must to make drilling the, the tunnel. When you finish drilling the tunnel, or at the same time you must to acondicionate, oh sorry, and safety uh, the, this this bolt. And after it's very easy to introduce <laughs> this. Uh, it's like a globe that you can uh, roll it, insert, and in flighting, and it will be very simple. Obviously, the real section between uh, our uh, tube and the drilling machine it will will not the same. And this gap, this gap, we can inject the concrete. The same procedure that now in these conditions. Thank you, really interesting. Do we have any other questions? More questions? Okay. I do not see any. I yes, have of one. course. I'm Laura from Hyped. I wanted to ask, have you tested these before, like full scale? You said you had done a mini model. Is this just 
uh, a concept or like has this been tested in real life? It's only a concept. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for us, uh, researchers from UBB and uh, Celeros Company, obviously, we don't start process to patent nothing if we don't know that it's possible to make it and to do it in lab. It's the first step. In lab, it's perfect. Structural conditions is okay, pass it perfectly, and for us, because it's very easy to make a pipe, a tube, with composites. It's easy. Now we have a lot of examples. A lot of companies can do it, but the most important for us is not only the section, is how to roll it, these wraps, and after transport to work on site and inflate it. This is the most important for us because it's not easy. It's not easy, really. And all of these are tested perfectly in our labs. If we can make it three meters and diameter 50 centimeters, why not two meters, three meters, and 12 meters longer? It's the same. We only need more money. <laughs> it's obvious. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If we do not have any more questions, I would like to thank you, Jose, uh, for coming today and giving us this amazing talk. I love the last video. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and I'll see you in the next talk. <laughs> thank you everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat> now you can take a coffee. <laughs>